Hello, I'm uh, Keith Hargan from Ireland. Uh, I was born in Derry City, which is in Northern Ireland, and I was raised in Donegal. Donegal is only like a stone throw away from Derry. It's like 10 minutes over the border, so it's not a very far throw. I went to school in Derry and I grew up in Donegal. As I say, Donegal is a very beautiful place. Um, it's engrossed with good fishing and good people and, uh, and lots of good music. I'll get my rest in another lifetime and make it up to him. I've been singing since I was four years old. I uh, sang in things called the Fish, which are kind of like competitions in Ireland, but it's not really. It's an old tradition in Ireland. It's been going on for hundreds of years where everyone learns songs and poems and different enactments, and they, they would uh, go and compete them as such, but it's more for to get people on the stage to do these songs and do these poems in front of people to get them used to acting it out in front of large crowds. And as I say, I've been doing that since I was four years old. The first song that I ever played was a song called Mrs. Jenny Wren. And I still remember the song. I was four years old and I sang it in a place called the Rialto in Derry City, which has now been knocked down. So I grew up doing that and singing in choirs like every other kid does, if you could sing at all. And um, started playing guitar when I was 10 years old. After that, I left school at 17. Not that every kid should leave school at 17. It just wasn't for me. Stay in school, kids. You got to get your education out there. And um, I went to London then. I had the lucky opportunity. A guy called Andy Wright, um, who's a real cool dude. Andy was a good friend of mine. He still is a good friend of mine. Took me under his wing for about a year in London. Showed me the ropes and kind of gave me the real taste for what I thought I wanted to do. And he definitely put the nail in the coffin. And I. Uh, ensured me that what I wanted to do was what I really wanted to follow, which was the, the music industry and singing and writing and doing whatever I could do. So I was in Metropolis Studios for about a year when I was 18 in London, um, getting in everyone's way in the studio basically. When I look back now, I was just a snotty nosed kid who thought that he could write songs and I only really had two songs to my name and somehow I ended up staying with Andy for about a year. So thanks Andy for putting up with me. After that, I went home, broke. And I started busking and playing in bars like everybody else does, three, four nights a week. And that's where I kind of got my pocket money together. And then I ended up auditioning for Celtic Thunder when I was 20 years old. Um, turning 27 next month, which isn't good. And uh, I've been doing that ever since. Two years ago, I got signed to Verve Records in, um, in LA. David Foster is the new CEO of Verve Records. Um, and David Foster... For those of you who don't know who David Foster is, David signed the likes of Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, Josh Groban, Andrew Bocelli, uh, Michael Bublé, Chicago, Earth One Fire, Michael Jackson, Seal, The Coors. Not only did he work with all these people, he also produced all their records and wrote a lot of their songs too. His nickname in the industry is The Hitman. And uh, David was my, f I was David's first signing to Verve since he took over Verve. And uh, David's right hand man's a guy called Joachim van der Zag. Joachim produced my album that came out last year. Um, Joachim's awesome, he engineers and mixes and masters everything that David does and David overseen kind of a lot of the song choices on my album. He also played in my album, he played on a song called Rosa. And uh, yeah, it's been crazy ever since that, that was two years ago now. Last September my album got released in Canada first. September 17th and it went uh, three weeks number one in Canada. And three weeks on pre-sale before it even came out and went number one in America. And it's been crazy ever since. I was on the road with Celtic Thunder at the time when the album came out. And uh, it was kind of tough because I was juggling both Celtic Thunder being on tour with all the guys and promoting an album. So I was getting up every morning at like 5 a.m. The bus was dropping me off to TV stations. And I was just doing my thing, talking like I'm doing right now in interviews and and radio and television and singing the, the single off the album which was a song called Don't Forget About Me and then doing the Celtic Thunder shows at night time with all the guys for those of you who don't know what Celtic Thunder is Celtic Thunder is um, the super group from, from Ireland a lot of people like they call them uh, I'm one of the main guys in Celtic Thunder I've been there since the very start and we have toured the world basically we've had 8 number 1 world billboard charts we've had um, I don't know, like three or four golds, three or four platinums in both America and Canada and Australia. And it's been crazy. I've been touring with those guys for six years now. I'm still touring with Celtic Thunder as well as juggling my own, my own kind of responsibilities with my own album. 
And we don't stop. I'm actually flying back now this summer. We're actually recording a few songs for a Christmas album. The boys are all there actually recording at the moment as I speak. And I'm out here on the road at the moment. I've been on tour now. We, we Celtic Thunder toured Australia in January, February. And I have been out on the road. We got back to LA for three days. I live in LA. And I had three days to buy a van and a PA system and myself and Barry Kerr and Dave Bakey and a few other friends along the way that were helping me with merchandise and driving. We hit the road for two months uh, around America. And then the start of the Canadian tour started. And we've been hitting Canada now for like two weeks. And I decided to come down here to the wonderful McPherson factory to stare and drool at guitars over the last two days, which has been awesome. It's great to see how they all get made and meet everyone who actually makes them and see the craftsmanship and the, the work that goes into making just one guitar that goes into making something as simple as a neck or, you know, anything at all. I've been sp sp sponsored by McPherson Guitars now for about six years and I've never had the opportunity to come down to the factory. I've met all the guys before and I got to meet Matt last night and I done a concert for all the guys here in the, the factory and I just say thanks to everybody for putting up with my nonsense and talking all night and sitting around and I didn't expect everybody to stay for the full show but you all did. <laughs> But yeah, it's awesome to see all the guitars in, in motion. I, I grew up in a working family, and I grew up helping my dad digging and building stuff in the gardens. My dad's a gardener, and I worked in boats my whole life and fixing up boats. And So I know what it's like to use my hands and to build stuff, but I couldn't even imagine what it's like to start to build something like this. Um, these guitars are, they're just awesome. It's as simple as that. I, I collect guitars. I have almost 60 guitars at home in Ireland in my collection, from guitars to banjos to mandolins, mainly guitars, mainly acoustics actually. And ever since I got the McPherson's I stopped collecting guitars. They, um, they, they put a, an end to my collection, which is good and bad in one way. Good because my mum was going to kick me out of the house because I keep all my guitars at her house in Ireland. And bad in the sense that I'm kind of not happy at the fact that 26 years old I've found the best guitar that there can possibly be and nothing else seems to top these things. And I love them. They're, they're awesome. I mean, I, I play so much. I just got a new McPherson like six months ago and I had to get refretted yesterday. That's how much I play these guitars. I play them all day, every day. And I gig almost at least sometimes twice a day, every two days. So they're awesome and I really am chuffed to be playing them. And uh, everyone here at McPherson is awesome and they're a really good bunch of people. So if you ever get the chance, if you're driving anywhere past Sparta and you want to see something really cool, come into the factory and I'm sure they'll will humor you and take you in and show you around. He can be, but Margaret only sees that sometimes. Sometimes she sees her unborn children in his eyes. Let us go to the banks of the ocean, where the walls rise above the Zyder's E. Long ago, I used to be a young Man. But dear Margaret remembers that for me. So my album, which is self-titled, is called Keith Harkin. I thought of many names to call the album and the label just thought, keep it simple, call it your name, and I thought, alright, fair enough. Uh, so the album's called Keith Harkin by yours truly, Keith Harkin. And you can get it on Amazon or iTunes or I'm sure probably a few more websites, but Amazon.com or iTunes.com is the place to get it. So if you want to hear an awesome album, <laughs> go to iTunes or Amazon and uh, you can you can hear me trying to play all these McPherson guitars. There's a full band on the album. Uh, the strings I recorded in Studio One in, in London, Studio One in Abbey Road, where the Beatles recorded all their tracks. I had a 60-piece orchestra. Uh, play play all my tracks in there. I flew my parents over from London to London to, to hear all the tracks get recorded and David Foster's actually playing piano on one of the tracks in the album and there's some some cover songs there that everybody's going to know so I hope you enjoy the album. Let me know what you think. Where the walls rise above the Zyder's E Long ago I used to be a young man But dear Margaret remembers that for me